Good afternoon, dear friends. Uh, this is our second session, the second lesson. Uh, in this session, we will be seeing the real number system and uh, the set theory. So, um, the uh, in our book, uh, Chiang uh, Mathem uh, Mathematical Fundamentals of uh, Mathematical Economics, or mathematical fund fundamentals of uh, uh, mathematical economics, they are the book by Chiang. Uh, it is the chapter two and the sub sub chapter two. It's the real number system. First, um, uh, let me show this small uh, small sign. You know this small sign. Uh, that we have as well on our uh, cellular phones and on our normal phones as well. Uh, it is the sign of number. This sign means number, actually. So this is one of the symbols showing uh, or meaning number. Uh, sometimes you will see it somewhere, like on the cellular phones, on the usual sort of fixed phones and uh, everywhere. Uh, we have some questions for thought, research, and discussion. Uh, we will ask and uh, answer some of them, and we will research uh, the rest of them. Those are like general culture questions. First of all, how did numbers appear? Can everything be counted? Can we count uh, anything? And the answer is no, of course. There are countable things and uncountable things. There are measurable things and unmeasurable things as well. And to count is one way of measuring things. So only the things which can be matched with, uh, with our uh, fingers, for instance, can be counted. With the integer numbers can be counted. Otherwise, they can't be counted. So, and how did the numbers appear? Why did we need the numbers? And how did they appear? There, we can go to the uh, primitive times before history, even before the written history, when the, at the caveman's time, and think how the cavemen have invented the numbers. Why should they need the number first? And then, how did they invent these numbers? So, uh, and uh, a related question is, what number system may be used on the planet of the extraterrestrial creature in the movie E.T.? If you have seen the movie E.T., there, uh, it's by um, um, the famous uh, director, um, Steven Spielberg. One of, in fact, I guess he became famous with this movie. It's not a very new movie, but you can find it on YouTube as well or otherwise in the internet and uh, watch it. It's a very nice movie, very human, very uh, well, very, very philosophical as well. Uh, in this movie, it is treated the friendship of an extraterrestrial creature who just landed, who just uh, fall on our planet by chance, and uh, a child from our planet. Very nice movie. But the matter here is that uh, this creature at the movie, this, uh, this extraterrestrial creature, ET means extraterrestrial actually. This extraterrestrial creature has four fingers instead of, well, or three, I guess four or three perhaps. In fact, if this creature has three fingers, for instance, on his planet, probably these creatures, these people, would be using probably a number system based on three or six. Why do we use the decimal system based on ten? Because we have five fingers at each hand and two hands make ten fingers. So you see, it's very, very simple. And how did it come about? In fact, there have been as well 20 systems based on 20. 20. Why? Because people who used 
systems based on 20 use their hands and their uh, feet. We have 10 fingers and 10 toes at uh, our um, feet. So if you count them together, you have it, it makes 20 and you can also base your counting system, your number system on 20. But it's not very practical. 10 is more practical because, because we can, even in, uh, when we have our shoes on, then we can see our fingers and we can count things with our fingers. That's why we use the ba system based on 10, the decimal system. Decimal means based on 10, 10. Deca is 10 in Greek and decimal is uh, based on 10. So um, our far relatives, the cavemen, had to count their sheep, I guess. Their sheep, their muttons, their, uh, well, their goats, whatever, their uh, dogs. So they matched them with their fingers. One finger, one, one sheep. Second finger, another sheep. Third finger, another sheep. So you can count up to 10 with your fingers. Do you know that, for instance, the crows, the birds, crow, which is very common in Turkey as well, they can count up to seven without fingers. If they have, for instance, seven eggs, if you take one, they notice it. If they have eight eggs and if you take one, they don't notice it. So they have a kind of counting as well. So counting is not uh, exclusively our uh, power, but other our capability. Our uh, other creatures, other animals can count as well, but not uh, as we do. So what are the other systems, number systems used on our planet? Well, we have a, a system based on two, the simplest and perhaps nowadays the most used. Why? Because it is yes or no. The electricity is on or off. All the electrical devices, including computers and our cell phones, everything, at the very origin, it is based on a number system on a mathematical system based on two. It's a binary system. Binary means based on two. It comes from the Boolean algebra. Boole was the first one who invented this system based on two, the mathematician. And then uh, it is very much applied in electronics and computers in all the information systems. It's uh, at the very, very bottom, at the very, very sort of uh, origin of the things, you have this one. Because zero one is one bit. Zero is when you don't have something. One, when you have this property. Or zero is when the electricity doesn't pass. One is one it, uh, when it passes. So this is one bit. When you put four or eight or 32 of these bits together, you make one byte. And so that you can make information systems, computers with it. You see? 10 we just explained it is based on our fingers so we use a system of 10 if you include your toes as well of your feet then it becomes 20 and they there have been people who used systems based on 60 why in earth should you use a system based on 60 or 360 first if I say 360 you start perhaps recognizing something but 60 60 is the one sixth of 360 so a system based on 60 and a system based on 360 make more or less the same thing actually um, the ancient Mayans the Maya people and the Egyptians the antique Egyptians the, and the Mayans they used a system based on 60 Well, uh, before understanding it, perhaps we can ask ourselves uh, where and why do we use a system based on 360? For counting, for measuring angles, the angles of uh, in a circle, for instance, 360. If you use the same circle and instead of dividing it in 360, degrees you can divide it in 60 degrees only if you don't have to make a very very thin very very sort of um, well very very thin very accurate job you can 
be satisfied uh, with a 60 angle as well. You can just divide it, the whole circle, in a full circle in 60. You can do it as well. So why on earth do we use a system based on 60 or 360? Because the ancient Mayans and Egyptians, they started uh, observing the sky. Why? In order to in order to understand and to predict the weather, the weather conditions, the seasons, whether it will be raining, it will be snowing or not, uh, all these things. And how do you do it? Just looking at the sky. You have observatories. Even today we have observatories. All these pyramids, they were observatories actually. They used these pyramids, they be it in the Mayan or Aztec Inca uh, civilizations, or in uh, old Egyptian civilizations, and even in Central Asia, you, we find pyramids. Well, what do you do with, with these pyramids? Is the, are they just tombs? No, they are tombs as well. Do you, you put that in it? Okay, but the structure itself is a perfect observatory. You use them for observing the sky. So you need a circle. You need a, a circular system, which is based on 60 or 360. What is I, and we use this 360 even today in uh, trigonometrics, no? In, uh, in the circular uh, sort of measures, the angles. And we use a system based on 60 even today. And we use it every day, every, every hour, every minute almost. It is our watch, the time. We measure one hour by 60 minutes. So we use, and because it is the, the watch is a uh, originally, it's a circular system. So we use, even today, we use a system based on 6C, which is the hours, the hours, minutes, seconds, you see? So all these systems exist even today. Some are archaic, like the 20, but you find the remnants of the system based on 20 in the French, uh, for instance, French uh, grading system. In the French schools, they grade, they don't grade or, or over 10 or 100, they grade over 20. Because uh, once upon a time, this system based on 20 was used in France. And even in the French language, for saying 80, you don't say 80 from 8, but you say 80, which is 4 times 20, which is a peculiarity, actually. In Canada, in the French of Canada or Belgium, Belgium you don't find it, but in the French language of France, you still find Katrin, which is 4 times 20, which is 80. You see, there are some remnants of this system even today. All right, so those are uh, some curious uh, remarks, some curiosity and some general culture. But what are the number systems we use in mathematics? We have to learn these number sets, these number systems, and uh, or the sets rather, and use them. What do we have now? Uh, the most uh, sort of the uh, the smallest um, set of numbers we use are counting numbers, which is denoted n with a n sub plus. This is n sub plus one plus, or even two pluses. Sometimes you can or well n sub plus is is, is sufficient. For z we can use two pluses or uh, one plus. And I will explain what it means. So, n plus means counting numbers. What are the counting numbers in Turkish? Sayma sayılar. 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 5, etc. It goes on like this. It is not, I mean, 0 is not included. You start by 1. 0 is, an, uh, is a later development in human history. F at the caveman's time there was no zero there was one two three you should you shouldn't uh, you have uh, not to lose your sheep if there is no sheep at all then you are uh, you are done uh, you should not lose your sheep you should return home with your sheep if even if the wolf eats some of them uh, you should be able to come back with the most of your sheep at home so we start by 1, 1, 2, 3, 1 plus 1 makes 2, 2 plus 1 makes 3, etc. And this can be denoted as well z plus plus, z sub plus plus, 2 plus. Why? Because 0 is not included. 
then comes n which is positive integers the set of positive in integers and what is it we add zero to counting numbers zero one two three etc up to infinity it goes like this plus one plus one plus one and this is z z plus why one plus because zero is included all these are positive numbers positive integers integer numbers because they are integer there is no one over two for instance one half there are zero one two or always you add one to obtain the second one the next one so and zero is included zero is a development in human history we find zero first in uh, old ancient uh, well india uh, it is said that indians old indians ancient indians have discovered zero zero which means nothing the absence zero is the absence of something if there is no more sheep if the wolf has eaten all the sheep we don't have any more then it is zero sheep at hunt so you see and uh, you have it is a it's a concept you should conceptualize the nothing which is a philosophical thinking as well so it's not it's not obvious then we have z minus which is negative integers starting by zero we can count downwards minus one minus two minus three etc why should we need this actually because if we take the uh, the c level as zero for instance and if we go up from the z uh, the c level we can say plus one meter plus two meter plus three meter but if we dig a hole or if we dive into the sea and go under the sea level we can say minus one minus two minus three we don't have to go to the sea for doing this at the elevators we use every day we have pluses and minuses if you have uh, if you have floors under the basement then first floor second floor third floor or would be the positive numbers minus one minus two minus three if you uh, descend for instance to the um well um to the car park in the minus three then it means you go down three floors and you find the uh, car park in your in your building for instance we use it today then we have the q which is rational numbers uh, z minus minus if you use z minus minus it means negative numbers without zero of course the q is rational numbers it's a set of rational numbers what what does it mean you have you don't have only integers in it but you have also one half one third one tenth all these fractions integers plus fractions it means uh, rational numbers if you add uh, fractions to the integers then you obtain and integers are fractions as well one is one over one for instance two is two over one minus two is minus two over one the, those can be written as fractions as well but why should we need them perhaps we need it in the human history in the human uh, well even before history one would need rational numbers even perhaps uh, negative numbers why because we have to share something we have to share a bread if we have one bread and if we will eat with you and me then we have we need one half i divide the bread i give one half to you one half to me if we mm, divide a cake if we are three for instance we need one third we make three slices we make three pieces out of this cake and give one piece to each one so this is one third you see we need rational numbers even be even before negative numbers and zero so this is important then we have irrational numbers this is a breakthrough in human history because it's not obvious it's just a philosophical thing all these square roots of um, square root of um, of uh, uh, well odd numbers or um, well numbers like two five etc uh, and we have also e and pi you know pi pi is uh, when you divide this a circumference a circle to its uh, its diameter you obtain pi three comma one four one uh, uh, five etc it goes on like this and without repeating itself there is also another number e 
Euler number from the name of the German mathematician Euler and uh, perhaps we will be seeing it a little bit if I have uh, time and occasion I will explain you how it has been found as well it comes from economics actually very interestingly you find the number e everywhere in nature even in the uh, sort of um, well uh, on the snails or on the uh, leaves of uh, of trees or even very in very odd places you find you encounter the uh, ratios with the number e but originally its discovery by Euler was uh, it, it came from economics interestingly and uh, if we have time at the end of this of the lesson I will explain not this lesson but at the end of the term I will be explaining to you a little bit where it came from we will use it as well then there is a set which is called decimal numbers well this is not very much used especially in American books you don't find them very much uh, they are all these decimals which can be expressed uh, with a comma but rational numbers are decimals and irrational numbers can be expressed in decimals as well the, dif the difference of the irrational numbers is that they don't repeat themselves the rational numbers uh, repeat themselves as decimals or are, they are finite or they repeat themselves they can be uh, written as the rational numbers but irrational numbers can only be written as decimals which don't repeat themselves so uh, it's another thing it's a more as I said a more philosophical thing as well then we have the real number set the set of real numbers when you unite when you join the Q rational numbers and I the irrational numbers when you put them together you obtain all the real numbers you see this sign this uh, equal with three uh, lines is a definition it means definition it is equivalent to or de uh, defined as def definition it's equivalence so real numbers means rational numbers union irrational numbers which is when you unite rational numbers with irrational numbers when you put them together you obtain real numbers a uh, dense set what is a dense set uh, real numbers is a dense set. All, uh, neither of the others which we uh, which we uh, mentioned are dense sets, but the real numbers is a dense set. Dense set is between two elements of this set. If a set is dense, between any two elements of the set, you find another third one belonging to the set. How, uh, however, neat these the distance can be between these two. So there is always another real number between two real numbers, which makes the real number set a dense set. You see, yoğun küme in Turkish, dense set. And we have also C, which we will we'll not use. Uh, C is imaginary or uh, complex numbers. There you find things which you don't find in the real world. It is uh, square root of minus one. In the real numbers, square root of minus is minus one or minus any number is not defined. But in the imaginary or complex number set, the square root of minus one and all the other negative numbers are defined. The square root of minus one is called i, the number i, and all the imaginary or complex numbers can be written as vectors in the Cartesian coordinate system. Minus seven, minus i, it has one real and one imaginary part i only i or minus 7 minus i 3 plus 2 i those are examples but we will not deal with them uh, engineers cannot do without imaginary or complex numbers Physi physicists and uh, engineers cannot do without it we in economics or in other social sciences sometimes in very very seldom and at very high levels we can have to do with the imaginary or complex numbers but usually not real numbers and the uh, previous ones would be sufficient for us so uh, integers and fractions together make rational numbers rational numbers and irrational numbers together make real numbers this is a summary of what we have said uh, then we come to the concept of a set we say set of numbers but what is a set and what do we do with the sets this is also something important isn't it 
So two three is the concept of set. A set is a well. It is as as if we put several things having a, a the same particular characteristic, some characteristic, some trait, together in a box or in a in a well in a whatever uh, yeah in a box. Uh, set the set so set notation and the set the uh, first the definition of a set a set is a group of things in or individuals having the same property they should have a same property one or many same properties for example all the peoples with blue eyes if i say all the creatures living creatures with blue eyes I should include blue-eyed cats as well and dogs and so if they are there are such a thing. Blue-eyed cats I have seen, but there are, there should be also blue-eyed dogs somewhere I guess. So, the if the property is having blue eye, then we include all these individuals, be them human or not, who have blue eyes. If I say blue-eyed persons, blue blue-eyed people, blue-eyed human beings, then I include only those human beings who have blue eye. You see, so this is a set. We have also at our homes we have sets of uh, well forks, knives, uh, the kitchen sets, don't we? So we use the word set very much over there in the kitchen, but it it is used everywhere. Then uh, elements of a set. What are the elements of a set? There are individual items grouped in a set, like the chicken in a chicken house. So this uh, fish in a school, fish school. The, this is uh, a set, a fish school is a set and the individual fish in a fish school are uh, elements of uh, this set, for instance. Well, ways of writing or depicting sets. Let's just uh, see the ways how to write the, uh, we use for writing the sets. The first one is counting or it is also called enumeration. Numer, numer is a number, so enumeration is counting, uh, say, uh, by one by one. Example, S is the set S, two, three, four. Three integers, for some reason, I collected this number together, two, three, and four. Those make the set S. I can use, secondly, I can use description. What is description? Giving this property, saying this property. I can say J is equal to it is the set of x's which are all real numbers this is the universal set we will learn what it is uh, shortly afterwards so x is is a member it's an element of r so that this uh, slash means so that such that in mathematics such that 2 is less than x x less than 5 x is a element of real numbers which is x is a real number such that 2 is less than x less than 5 you see so this is description we describe the property those the, these two sets are not equal though this is just integers 2 3 4 those are all the numbers between 2 and 5 excluding 2 and 5 but all the other numbers all the other real numbers between 2 and 5 then the third way to express the sets are Venn diagrams, which are the potato or egg diagrams. We make some potato-like figures and put the elements in them. We will also see them in this lesson. But we, we have certainly saw, I mean, saw them before. Uh, we have certainly seen them before. Uh, Venn diagrams, the potato or egg diagrams. Then the fourth one is the Cartesian coordinate system. Those are crossing, crossing number lines with units. And you know, Cartesian comes from, comes from Descartes, the name of Descartes, the French mathematician of uh, uh, end of 17th, uh, initial uh, beginning of 18th century, if I'm not mistaken, uh, René Descartes. And uh, he found this system. Uh, he invented the system of crossing lines, number lines, uh, to in order to 
uh, to name to point the, the several points in the use in the in the space uh, in the surface of a, of a well of the blackboard or of the uh, paper so this is the Cartesian coordinate system and we use them as well to depict to note the sets those are the main ways to show to write sets all right so uh, we have also several classifications of sets one is a finite set a finite set is a set with a finite number of elements like the well, like, as an example we can say the set s which is before here here s is two three four the numbers are finite there are three elements this is a finite set then we have also example uh, infinite sets an infinite set or infinite but uh, rather one says infinite infinite sets or infinite sets are sets with an infinite number of elements what are the examples q and j q is the all the rational numbers or r uh, as well or z is a, it's countable but it has infinite number of elements or j j is this simple set we wrote before all the real numbers between 2 and 5 well between 2 and 5 there are uh, an infinity of uh, infinite number of uh, real numbers so it's also an infinite set you see uh, then we can classify this as, as countable and uncountable what are the countable denumerable you can say denumerable or countable is the same thing countable or denumerable sets are sets whose elements can be matched with natural numbers that's to say it can be counted you can just count them with your fingers almost and then you can continue they are uh, they don't have to be finite they can be infinite but infinite there yeah, can be infinite numbers of elements but they, they should go one by one so you should be count uh, you should be able to count them example set of integer numbers integer numbers can can be matched with counting numbers be them negative or positive if they go one by one so every time you add one in order to obtain the next one so uh, those are countable sets you have also uncountable or non denumerable sets uh, those are sets whose elements cannot be matched with natural numbers that's to say which cannot be counted here the set of real numbers or the set j which we have seen that is the real numbers between two and five they are uncountable there is an infinite number and they can't count them because uh, in the, between any two uh, two real numbers we have another one so they are uncountable there, there are infinitely many and uncountable number of uh, real numbers between two and five so this set j uh, is yeah, an uncountable set as well you see real numbers is uncountable as well all right then we have some symbols the this is like epsilon like a small cap a the like the e uh, character but it is a symbol of membership to a set and it is read as is an element of or belongs to this small stylized e type thing is called is an element of or belong, belongs to this it shows the membership to a set this is like the greek letter epsilon a type of small case e uh, by the way you can find the list of these spatial letters and symbols at the end of your book you have also the pdf copy of your book so you can see at the end there is a page or even perhaps two pages where they give all these meanings of these spatial symbols and how they are read etc uh, well example two belongs to s what was s two three four a set consisting of two three four so two belongs to s three belongs to j of course between two and five all the real numbers between two and five belong to j and three is between two and five so three belongs to j three is an element of j e the earlier number this two virgus uh, two comma seven one etc this number as well is a real number so 
it belongs to the set of real numbers. It is an element of the set of real numbers. Or, or any x. x is an element of R, which means x is a real number. It's a element of the set of real numbers, you see. And when we put a slash on this, on any symbol in mathematics, it means not. This epsilon not with a slash, which uh, well uh, means is not an element of or does not belong to. For instance, 8 does not belong to S. 8 is not an element of S. Why? Because S is 2, 3, 4. There is no 8 in it. I, which is square root of minus 1, is not an element of R. It doesn't belong to R. Why? Because uh, it's an imaginary number. It's not a real number. You don't find this mm, square root of minus 1 in the set of real numbers. So I doesn't belong to R, or I, I is not an element of R. You see? Then, relations among sets. What is the simplest relation? Equality. S1, is it equal to S2? These two sets, are they equal or not? How shall we know it? Well, it is simple. If they have the same elements, not only the same number of elements, but exactly the same elements, not one more, not one, one less, not one different, all must have the same elements. No one more element, not one less element, and no different, not in, in any element which is different than uh, in the other set. But the order is not important. So, example, S1 is 2A7F, for instance. For some reason, we took these symbols, 2A7F. S2 is 7, 2, A, F. It's okay. The number has changed, but it doesn't matter. They have the, all the same as 2, 2, 7, 7, A, A, F, F. There is no different element in any of these sets. So S1 is equal to S2. So equality is defined this uh, like this in uh, the algebra of sets. This is the algebra of sets, set theory. Then... This, um, well, this uh, sort of, um, it's not inverted, it is a little bit like a lying U. This means uh, is a real subset of the set, or is included in. This can be read as is included in, or is a real subset of S. What does it mean? T is a real subset of S, is T is included in S. What does it mean? All the elements of T are also elements of S, but in S there are some more elements than in T. So the set T is a real subset of the set. That's to say all the elements of T are also elements of S, but the inverse is not valid. An example, T is 3, 7, S is 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. The odd uh, sort of uh, ciphers. So we have 3, 7, of course, 3, 7 is also in S. So T is included in S, but S is not included in T. T is a real subset of S. Um, it is also pronounced as T is a subset of S, as T is included in S. Or we can also write S and invert this sign and say S includes T. S is the superset t is the subset so s includes t we can we can also write this one then s is not included in t is not a subset of t then we have the subset sign the symbol and we put a uh, slash on it then it means s is not a subset of t or s is not included in t it means there are elements of s which are not in t all right so let's see. Uh, if two sets are subsets of each other, then two sets are equal. If they are not real subsets of each other, sets can be written as S1 is included or equal, like less than or equal. You, you just note the similarity between the less than or equal sign. In fact, for the set theory, they, it means less than or equal almost. S1 
is not is included and equal to s which means they can have the same elements as well and this uh, well here we have a little bit higher this one normally is at the line of the other on uh, with other other symbols but for some reason the program here puts it a bit higher usually it should have been here this inverse v it means and in mathematics or in logic so uh, s1 is included and uh, equal to s2 and s if s2 is also included and equal to s1 then these two sets should be equal there is no other way if something is in the other one and the other one is in the first one it means they are equal they can't have if s1 has one more element s1 cannot be included in s2 if s2 has one more element s1 cannot be included uh, s1 has more, one more element s1 cannot uh, be included in s2 so in order to be equal both should be included in each other they, they should have the same number of elements and the same elements uh, so that they are equal you see so this sign is pronounced as is a subset or of or equal to like less than or equal to but this is in set theory is a subset of or equal to it's included or equal to you you can say as well that's to say one set may not be a real subset but be equal to the other as well we we don't exclude the equality the situation of equality and this the inverse of this sign the other way around it means includes or equal to s includes or equal to t for instance example n is a real subset of z z is a real subset of q q is a real subset of r or we can also write uh, n is a uh, included or equal to z is included or equal to q in, is included or equal to r both we can write down but we know that actually this is true equality doesn't hold here we can write down but we know that there are no, uh, there are elements in z which are not elements of n there are elements in q which are not elements of z and there are elements in r which are not elements of q so in reality the uh, strict inclusion is the right one but we can also write uh, is equal to knowing that they are not equal or we can write down r includes q includes z includes r or r includes or equal to q includes or equal to z includes or equal to on n this is possible as well uh, another sign we use you see you rem remember the sign we have seen at the beginning of the of the class of the lesson it is the sign of number uh, this one an s or n s n and uh, par parenthesis uh, when you put s in it it means cardinality of a set cardinal or cardinality of a set is to say the number of elements of a set s and s or number of s so now a number of elements in a set s this is called cardinal of s or cardinality of, of s and we have also p this should be a um, well it is of course a uh, big case letter but also uh, it should have been a beautiful letter with a handwriting letter but the, the problem changed anyway it is p from the power set it is the uh, initial of power and s this means p sub s is the set of subsets of a set or a power set of s set of all subsets of a set if we can form with the elements of a set we can form subsets smaller sets then uh, this p sub s is the set of all the subsets of s so we come to a special subset which is empty set or null set this is a set with without elements a set which has no elements is an empty set or null set it is defined this, this way well example s is one three five it, uh, the set s consists of these three numbers in the subsets forming the subsets of s we can form subsets which means smaller sets with one element one three five we use this uh, beautiful parenthesis this 
uh, how can I say? Uh, well, yes. Uh, in French, it is called accolade, and uh, we can say beautiful parenthesis. And uh, these uh, we use this type of parenthesis in order to uh, to uh, to to well to describe sets or subsets. So we can have subsets which are as, um, themselves sets. So one, three, and five are singletons. They are subsets formed of one element. Then we have subsets formed of two other elements: one, three, one, five, three, five. 1, 3, 1, 5, 3, 5. We don't write down 3, 1, 5, 1, 5, 3 because they are the same. The order is not important. And then we have one subset of three elements, which is 1, 3, 5, and no more other. But the, the, or there is also uh, empty set or null set. Empty set or null set is a subset of all sets. We should include empty set or null set in all sets. It's not an element. It is a subset. We should include it in the power set, which is the set of subsets of a set. Empty set should be there. So, um, empty set is a subset of all sets. Why? Well, let's see. The, here is the proof. Uh, if empty sets, em, empty set were not a uh, subset of any set S, it would mean it is equivalent to there is an element there is an element x belonging to uh, belonging to null set empty set and x is does not belong to s but such an element doesn't exist exist because uh, there is no element in empty set there is no x in empty set so for all this is a contradiction therefore for all S, uh, the empty set should be included in S. Empty set is a subset of any set, but it is not uh, an element. It can be an element in the set of sets, only because this is a set. This is not an element. This is a set having no element. Don't don't forget. It. So, what is the number, the cardinality of the power set? which is the set of subsets of a set, this PS, P sub S. What is the cardinality of the power set, the number of elements of a power set? It is, if the number of the element uh, of, this, uh, of the set S is 3, for instance, number of its power set, cardinality of its power set is 8, which is 2 to the power N, which is 2 to the power number of S. Why is it so? The hint is find the decision tree. We will shortly see the decision tree and understand why it is 2 to the power number of s, cardinality of s. We will see it. Well, here is a passage taken. Here is a sort of text taken from a very good book, Book of Proof. Uh, which I might have shared with you as well. If not, I will share with you. Uh, this is open. You can find it at the internet. You have the address here. Uh, Richard Hammack, who has written a book of proofs. All the proofs, all the types of mathematical proofs can be found in this book. It's a very good book. I advise you firmly, strongly. It's not, we are not uh, sort of, it's not obligatory reading. The only obligatory reading is the our uh, course textbook, the um, well the Chayan. But this book is a good one. I for those who are interested in mathematics, I I strongly sort of uh, recommend it. Here there is a lot of things, uh, explanations. I will not read them. You can read by yourself. But I will explain you this decision tree and the references in there you can find it in this in the internet in Turkish and in English its original is in English but you can also find the PDF in Turkish Turkish translation exists I use both of them uh, I mean sometimes it's uh, it explains things better than our book so you see here is a decision tree and you can use a decision tree in any project it is part of the project evolution or project uh, management uh, sort of knowledge. 
if you deal with projects, if you ever, if you have ever dealt with some project, what any project, I think you have seen or you have made some decision trees like this. And this we can do it now. We can use it in order to understand how we form the subsets. So we start with the empty set. You see, um, this is a tree for listing subsets. We say we start with empty sets with no element at all. And we have the element A, B, and C in the set S. We have a set with three elements, A, B, C. Very good. So uh, we start with empty set with no element. Shall I insert the element A or not? If not, I continue with the empty set. If yes, then I add A to the empty set to, do, to nothing. And I, I obtain a subset with A, with a, with a single element. You see? With, if it is no, then I continue with the empty set. I have no element at hand. It is empty set. Then I come to the second node. Those are called nodes. Uh, then I come to the second node and ask, shall I insert B or not? With the empty set, if I say no, I don't insert B, then I continue with the empty set. If I say yes, then I insert B and B nothing and B makes B. So I obtain a, a singleton a sort of a subset of one element, which is B. This is a subset. Here I came up to A. If shall I insert B at, if at that node I say no, I continue with A. I don't insert anything. I continue with A. But if I say yes, then I will add B to the A. And so A and B, I obtain a subset of two elements, which is AB. You see? Then I come to the third node. I ask, shall I insert C or not? Here, I am still at empty set. If I say no, I don't insert anything. I don't insert C. Then I end up with, an, with a set with no elements, which is empty set. You see, I obtain empty set. And this is also why I have empty set in all sets as well. You see, in all uh, power sets as well. Not only in power set, but in all sets, but also in power sets. So at the, now at the empty set, if I say yes to insert C, then I will add C to the nothing, and then I obtain a singleton, a one a subset with one element, which is C. If at B, when I, I came up to here, I come up to here and I ask, uh, shall I insert C? If I say no, I end up with a, a subset with one element, which is B. If I say it's, it's yes, then I insert C here, so I obtain a subset of two elements, B, C. Here I came up to A, and if I say no to insert C, then I end up with the single element subset A. If I say yes, then I end up with A, C, at the size subset A, C. Here I came with A, B. If I say no to insert C, then I end up with A, B. If I say yes to C, insert C, then I insert it and I obtain A, B, C, the um, subset with three elements. And you see, I have a, B, C, one element subset, A, B, A, C, B, C, two element subset, A, B, C, three element subset, and empty set. How many there are they? Eight. What was our uh, number, the number of S? It's three. What is eight? Two to the power three. Because at eight, uh, each node, I multiply with two. Two times two times two is two to the power three. So you see, it's obvious. It's not so... It is not so uh, so difficult. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Here at the text, it has been a, a mistake, I guess. I don't know whether uh, it appears when it is coming here or it is in the original presentation, PowerPoint presentation. This should be 2 to the power n, not 2n but 2 to the power n. So, 
All right, then we come to set operations. We come to set operations. Uh, by the way, I continue recording, I continue uh, giving the lesson, but you don't have to uh, listen to or to watch everything when you are repeating it, when you are watching it. You can stop somewhere and then continue afterwards uh, in order to to sort of to uh, well to um, to value the time to use my time well I just record everything together otherwise you can have a pause wherever you wish and then continue afterwards I will put these videos at my YouTube page as well and you can you can watch them there as well and besides here at the um, at this program uh, we have also the in I mean uh, we have also the records you can you can watch from there as well as as you wish all right and I send you this uh, PowerPoint presentations as well for in order for you to read them and you have the book so set operations well we learn the sets in order to make operations with them to make certain certain calculations certain certain things certain um, how can I say activities with them? These, those are called operations, set operations. Uh, here we need U. U is universal set. It is defined as the set which includes all the elements in, in a subject having a given general property. This is universal set. Then we have the logical operators. As I said, this logic this inverse V. This is like a small inverse V. It should be in line with the other words, but for some reason this program puts it a little bit higher. So it is, it is a small inverse V at the same line as the other words. At the presentation, you will see it like this. And this uh, V, normal V, small V, not inverted, it should be as well on the same line. But it is a bit higher here when it passes from the presentation to here to PowerPoint presentation to this program. Uh, it deforms a little bit. So logical, those are called logical operators. They are from this formal logic, symbolic logic. This inverse V is called AND. This is the AND in, uh, we use in our everyday language as well. And it is a logical and even electronic operator. In electronics, they are very much used. And also in other ways, other places as well. So it necessitates the fulfillment of both conditions or propositions. And means this, the first condition and the second condition, if there is a third one, the third condition, all these conditions should be fulfilled together at the same time. Otherwise, and is not true. Or all these positions, all these situations should be true at the same time. All the propositions should be true at the same time. Otherwise, and is not true. It is false. You should have all the conditions fulfilled together. Then and is fulfilled. You see, and is true. Then the uh, small v, not the inverse one, is and. And it goes with multiplication, actually. And uh, intersection in the uh, set theory. This small v, not inverted, is read or, or inclusive or, because there is also an exclusive or. I will explain. And this goes with plus and with union in set theory. The or is an inclusive or, this is the logical or, which includes one condition the other condition and both conditions together. Uh, I call it Mevlana operator because it says just come whoever you are. Just come. I, I accept uh, the first condition, I accept the second condition and both. And this is different than uh, the OR VEA we use in uh, our everyday language. Because when we say or in our daily speech, in our everyday language, it is the exclusive or. It doesn't include and it in mathematics or in logic and in electronic, it's called XOR, exclusive or XOR. This or is inclusive or, which is in logic and in mathematics. 
But XOR is the OR, which it is used also sometimes in uh, logic, mathematics, or electronics, whatever. But this XOR is the uh, OR we use in our everyday speech, everyday language, which ex excludes the intersection, meaning it accepts one condition, it accepts the other condition, but not both together. It's either or, not both together. But this or includes both the both cases as well. Uh, if uh, two conditions are fulfilled at the same time, it it, uh, it is true, or accepts it. XOR doesn't accept it. It's either one condition, the first condition, or the second condition, but ne never both. You see the difference? All right. Uh, or proposition, it can be a condition or any proposition. You see, proposition is a sentence which can be mm, false or true. Um, then we have the union sign. This is a set operator, union, like a U, stylized U. Also, universal set is U, but uh, you don't confound them, they are different. One is uh, U. The other one is a more like a, this symbol, which is a stylized U. It's not confounded. U is universal set. It's in mathematics. These sets and uh, symbols are, well, the operators are made uh, sort of um, uh, straight symbols, and the other ones, the sets, names of sets, and the other uh, elements are made a little bit uh, sort of uh, skewed, skew like skewed uh, symbols. So, uh, oh, here we have, a, we have a mistake. This should not be E, but U, actually. E is evrensel küme, the Turkish of universal set. In English, it is U. U is universal set. A is evrensel küme. This is in Turkish, so the, I prepared this, uh, these pre presentations originally in Turkish, so it remains from them there. I changed most of them, but here I forgot, I guess. So this is X is an element of U, universal set, so that X is an element of A or X is an element of B. This is A union B, which means to put all the toys in two boxes in one box, without counting uh, twice. All the elements in two sets, you put in one set, but uh, if you have same elements, you put them just once. You don't count them twice, you count them just once, and you put them just once. So this is A union B, which is, and uh, if we want to describe it, it is the description. What does it say? X as an element of universal set, U should be, so that, or such that, X is an element of A, or X is an element of B. B. So, it can be an element of A only, it can be an element of B only, or it can be an element of both, which is the intersection of two. You see? And in order to count the number of the A union B, it is the number of A plus number of B, minus number of the intersection of A and B. Why? Let's see from this Venn diagram. You see the Venn diagram is this one. The uh, quadratic, sort of quadratic um, frame out of these eggs or potatoes is the universal set. You see U, universal set. A is the set A, B is the set B, and they have also an intersection, which is the elements common to both, which are both elements of A and B. This is the, their intersection. So if I count A and if I count B and if they have some common elements, I counted them twice. But I should subtract once in order not to count them twice. So uh, the A and B together, if I make sort of, if I color them or if I uh, sort of make a sign such that they I just join them together. It is the union. In the union, I count, if I count A, I count once the intersection, common elements in A and B. If I count B, then I count also another one, uh, once more the com common elements. 
So I count them twice. In order to correct it, then I should subtract from the sum of number of A and number of B, number of A intersection B. Once the number of common elements, I should subtract. In order to obtain the number of elements of A union B, the cardinality of A union B. You see? And A union B is all this uh, green, shaded green colored area. We can show it with coloring with some uh, some texture or whatever. Uh, or a race, whatever. So, uh, the example. In an example, we can understand better. We can visualize it better. A, the set A consists of the elements 3, 5, set 7. B consists of the elements 2, 3, 4, 8. What are the common elements? 3, just 1, 3, I guess. There is no other common element. But what is the A union B? It is 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8. Even if there are 3 here and 3 here, I don't count 3 double, just once. I count it just once, because it's the same element. So A union B is all these elements without counting counting the double, the common ones. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8 is the A union B, the set A union B. An example we have already seen is rational numbers, union irrational numbers gives us the uh, R, the real numbers. Real numbers is a union of rational numbers with irrational numbers. You see? All right. So, intersection. What is intersection? We have already spoken about intersection. Let's see on the Venn diagram and then uh, write down the, uh, the description. We have the universal set, which is this quadratic frame, all the elements. We have the set A and the set B. The elements common to both A and B, which is the elements which are both elements of A and elements of B, which is this uh, green shaded area, this is uh, the A intersection B, you see? And if we define it in logical terms, if we describe it, intersection is the x, all the elements in the universal set, such that x is an element of A and x is an element of B. They, you see, both should be fulfilled. They should be and elements of A and elements of B, both together. Both conditions should be together. So this is this uh, green shaded area. And they must not be counted twice. It is mean. It means uh, to put the same toys in two boxes in one box, without counting twice. This, the same toys, but in the union we put all the toys together. Here we put together only the same toys in one box. The example A is a, the set A is three five seven. B is two three four eight. What is the common element? 3, the, like in the previous example. So A intersection B is the set consisting of one element, which is 3. You see? And uh, another example. A is minus 3, 6, 10. B is 9, 2, 7, 4. Do they have any common element? No. So what is their intersection? It is empty set. If there is no common element, their intersection would be empty set. There is also completion, which is an interesting thing, which is much used as well. Complement of A or not A. Very easy to understand, sometimes not so easy to use, but very easy to understand. So we have the universal set U, which is depicted this, with this quadratic frame. All the elements are in this. A is a subset of U. A is a set in U. It is a different number of elements of U, and there are also elements outside A, which do not belong to A. A is the set A, which belong, uh, all the elements which belong to A, which have the characteristic A. And those um, elements who are elements of universal set, but not elements of A, is not A or complement of A. This is the completion operator. Uh, 
and it is depicted it is it is its symbol is can be a tilde this is a tilde or a nut you put a slash on a or a uh, with a sort of apostrophe with a, a cutting sign like this or a um, a to the power c like to the power it's not to the power it means a complement but you put uh, a c small c uh, as if a uh, to the power c a bit higher than c like this all these means complement of a and it is read complement of a a tilde or a slash or a uh, the cutting sign or a to the power c all these means complement of a or not a which is described as uh, this one x is an element of universal set so that x is not an element of a or you can also write it down like this x is an element of universal set and x is not an element of a all this gray gray you no know, or green shaded area outside a you see example if our universal set is 0 1 2 3 4 and here I should correct a mistake if there is any a universal set doesn't mean all the things it's not our universe it is any set having all the characteristics we want we we are interested in it should can be a very simple set as well like this one 0 1 2 3 4 for some reason I am interested in these not no else so nothing else so uh, this 0 1 2 3 4 this set can be my universal set a is 2 3 it includes 2 3 great what is a not or a complement complement of a what do I have in u 0 1 2 3 4 which ones are the elements of a 2 3 when I exclude 2 3 from this set I remain with 0 1 4 so this is complement of a a not or complement of a is you see a tilde or a slash or a c whatever it is zero one four elements of u which are not elements of a simple isn't it all right then we come to the set operation laws let's uh, deal with set operation laws as well um, we have the commutative law commutativity I call it Ali Veli is equal to Veli Ali. When you change the order of the sets, the um, the solution doesn't change. The result doesn't change. So A union B is equal to B union A. Is it really so? We should prove. We should prove it. How do we prove? Just writing the, them. Um, left hand side and right hand side and show their equality or start with the left hand side and go to the right hand side this is also a way of proving a union b what is it x is an element of u such that x is an element of a and x is an element of or x is an element of a b not and but or a union b is the set x belongs to u such that x is an element of u such that x is an element of a and x is an element of b or x is an element of b and what is b union a it is x is an element of u such that x is an element of b or x is an element of a but what does it mean it means if it x belongs to b it's okay if it belongs to a it's okay if it belongs to both it's okay again and what does it mean a union b if it belongs to uh, x it belongs to a is it's okay if x belongs to b it's okay and if x belongs to a and b together then it's okay again so what does it mean these two things are equal you see we, i can once i write, write them um, down as a logical uh, sentence a proposition logical proposition i can change the order in or because it doesn't uh, it is um, it is uh, sort of totally symmetrical i can take a first then b and their intersection their common elements or i can take b then a and then carry their common elements so it would be the same you see and for an example well the uh, venn diagram is simple you have u 
universal set, which is the quadratic frame, and the sets A and B, which intersect here as well. The intersection is here between them, the common elements. But A union B is A and B together without counting the double counting, the intersection. So all these two eggs or two potatoes together, you see, uh, shaded green with green, colored with green, all these area means A union B. Does it matter if I start by B and color towards A? No, it's the same. So A union B is equal to B union A. And we, with a numerical example, we have U, universal set, which are the, the ciphers, the Arabic numerals, ciphers we use for writing numbers. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We form all the other numbers with these, don't we? So those are the Arabic numerals or ciphers. So with these Arabic numerals, why they are uh, called Arabic numerals? Because uh, originally they come from the from the Arabic way of writing them. Those are Europeanized, you know, are, those are Latinized types of Arabic numbers, Arabic numerals. So there are also Latin numerals, which is another thing. I mean, I, double I, triple I, etc. Maybe something else. All right. Um, so with these, uh, we have two sets. A is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. B is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. nine. And uh, U is uh, all these Arabic numbers from 0 to 9. All right. What is A union B? I will take all these together without double counting the common ones. 0, 1, 2, 3. All right. 4 is... Uh, it, it is in both sets, so I take it once. 5 is in both sets, I take it once. And 6, 7, 8, 9. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 is the A union B. What have I obtained? I obtained the universal sets. If I, uh, the universal set is the A union B. I obtained by chance this, because these sets are so that their union gives me universal set. If I take first B, then A, would it change anything? No. 9, 8, 7, 6 would be here. And then 4, 5 are common, but I take them once. And then 3, 2, 1, 0. So if I write them down, I would obtain the universal set again. You see? All right. Then uh, we have the intersection. And A intersection B is equal to B intersection A. The commutativity exists uh, as well here. I can change the order of the operation. I can first write down A and B, A intersection B, or B intersection A. Is it a proposition? I should prove it. So the proof is simple again. Uh, A intersection B, I write down the definition. And B intersection A, I write down the definition and see that they are equal. They give the same thing. So what is A intersection B? Those are elements X, X, such that elements of, I mean, X is a member of, is an element of, element of uh, universal set, such that X is an element of A and X is an element of B. Again, this and, this inverse V should be in line with the other symbols. But... Here it's sort of it slides a little bit. It's, it's, uh, this its position is changed by this program. At the presentation, it's correct. So x is an element of a and x is an element of b. And what is b intersection a? Those are elements of the universal set. X is x are elements of universal set such that x is an element of b and x is an element of a. Are they different? No, they should be both elements of A and B, the common elements, whether you start by A and B or B and A. So the example universal set are again the Arabic numerals and we have A is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, B is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. What is A intersection B? I, we take just the common ones. 0, 1, 2, 3 doesn't exist in B. 6, 7, 8, 9 doesn't exist, don't exist in A. 
in both sets we find 4 and 5. So this is the subset which denotes A intersection B. A intersection B is the this subset 4, 5. And what is B intersection E? A, it is 4, 5 again. Those are the common ones. So if this is A and if this is B in the Venn diagram, we have the universe set again and two of the sets A and B. Their common part is this small elliptic area, the ellipse between the two. Um, again, it's a little bit different at the presentation, but they changed, I guess. A little bit, the colors were a little bit different, but here it changed. No matter. I guess you understand. A is the whole, um, whole egg on the left side. B is the whole egg on the right side. And where they intersect, you see, intersection, they intersect, they enter in, in each other. Their common elements here is their intersection, A intersection B, or B intersection A, and it's the same place, the same region. All right. Then, we have set subtraction. In fact, we can also subtract sets from each other. Uh, this one, there isn't in the book. It is found in an exercise, but I think it's important, so I explain it as well in my presentation. So you should also learn it from the presentation. I minus B, like in numbers. But this is, sometimes you use the, I mean, in some books, usual minus sign is used as well. But in most, most mathematical books, mathematics books, you, you find this slash, this inverse slash instead of, uh, instead of um, the usual minus sign. And it is red, I minus B. I subtract B from A. And this is B minus A. This is red like this. But what does it mean? Their definition is like this. Those are elements of the universal set. X is element of universal set such that X is an element of A, but not an element of B. A minus B is... If there are some common elements in A and B, I just throw out also the, throw away the uh, common elements. So I end up with this kind of, of uh, well, it's not a half moon, but almost. This is A minus B. I subtract the common elements from A. So this uh, shaded area is A minus B on the Venn diagram. And here we see B minus A. I just wrote them down, but it's not very much seen here on the presentation. You will see it better. Uh, and then I take B and subtract all the common elements. I end up with this shaded area. So on an um, example, we can understand better. Uh, B minus A is X, all the X's, well, it's just a set of X's, uh, which are, um, which are members of the, which are elements of universal sets, such that X is an element of B and X is not an element of A. This is the definition of subtraction. The example, U is again our Arabic numerals from 0 to 9. Uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. A is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. B is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, like in previous examples. A minus B, what shall I do? I will take A and subtract, throw away the common elements, which are 4 and 5. So what I remain with, what I stay with, is 0, 1, 2, 3. This is A minus B. B minus A, what is it? Well, I take B, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and subtract, which is throw away the common elements, which are 4, 5. So what I remain is with is 6, 7, 8, 9. This is B minus A, you see? All right. Then we come to the associative law, associativity. Uh, what is it? It is the rule of grouping. We can group, if we have more than two operations, three, four more operations, we can group them if this operation has the, it uh, abides, it obeys 
the associated law, it applies to the associated law or associativity, if it has the property of associativity, then we can group them, these operations. So for instance, A union, B union, C. I can make it first B union, C, and then unite these to A. Make A union, first B union, C, and then A. Uh, parentheses in mathematics means uh, changing the order of operations. When you see a parenthesis, then you should first perform the operation in the parenthesis and then perform the other ones uh, outside the parenthesis. Parenthesis means this in mathematics. So A union parenthesis B union C means you should first form B union C and then make A union to this one. But you can also make a union B for first, and then unite this to C, or unite C to this, and the result of this, which is A union B grouped, then union C. And the associative law says that without changing the order of things, you can group them. So A union grouped B union C is equal to A union B grouped union C. This is the proposition. We should prove it. But before we should we prove it, let's see the Venn diagrams and then prove it and see an example. In the Venn diagrams, we have three intersecting sets, A, B, C, all intersect, as you see. So this is the same diagram, the left-hand side of the proposition of the equality and the right-hand side of the equality. We have universal sets for each one the quadratic frame, and then the intersecting sets A, B, C in each one. So what does it say to me? Left-hand side, left-hand side is the left side of, the, of inequality. Uh, what is it? It says, first, unite B and C, B union C. What is it? I will color, if I make it with colors, or make any sign anyway, I will join together B and C. I will color B and C together. Then A union C, I will also add to this all the elements of A without counting twice. So I will also color A and B and C. And this way I obtain this figure which is like the Mickey Mouse a little bit. It uh, just uh, reminds us the Mickey Mouse a little bit. This, the whole area of A, B, C I should color. This is A union, B union, C, and I color first B union, C, and then I add to this A, I color A. And then all these area, A, B, C, is colored. But what, what does it happen if I color first A union, B? I color A and B together. All this is colored, A union, B is all this together. And then I color C again afterwards. Does it change anything? No. I obtain still the same Mickey Mouse type figure. All these three sets are colored. So those are really equal. This is not a proof, but a demonstration a, a, on a figure on uh, Venn diagrams. Uh, how do I prove it officially? I prove it by description. What is A union parenthesis B union C in parenthesis? It means X is, well, A. I should write down A. Then make a union and then write B union C. A, the set A, I can write it down like this. It's a little bit tautological, but it's okay. X is an element of universal set such that X is an element of A. This is the set A. Union, B union C. What is B union C? Those are uh, elements of the universal set which means X is, so that X is an element of B or X is an element of C. So it can be B, C or common elements. So B union C is this one. But then here I have X is element of A and union. Can I also put this thing, this A into the parenthesis? Of course, with what? With or. Union goes with or. You see, here the union, I made it with or in the parenthesis. Or goes with union and with plus as well. 
for the for the arithmetic. All right. So when I put x belongs to a inside the parenthesis, instead of union, I use or. When it enters the parenthesis, it becomes the logical or, which is not exclusive or, but the inclusive or. So the whole thing becomes x is an element of u, so that x is an element of a or, parenthesis, x, x is an element of b or x is an element of c. And if I open this parenthesis, does it change anything? It doesn't change. All the conditions and their, I mean, uh, it's okay if A is X is an element of A. It's okay if B X is an element of B or X is an element of C or of any of these two or any of these three. So all the intersections are accepted as well. So I can write down, I can open this proposition like X is an element of uni uh, universal set such that X is an element of A or X is an element of B or X is an element of C. Then from there I can close again and obtain the left right hand side or I can open the right hand side and obtain this uh, most open form. Here uh, the book opted the first uh, strategy. It opened the left hand side and then uh, it just uh, passed from there to the right hand side changing the uh, operations so once we obtain this most open form x is an element of a or x is an element of b or x is an element of c we can also uh, recollect x is an element of a and x is an element of b in a parenthesis and say X, uh, this is equal to X element of universal sets so that X is an element of A or X is an element of B in parentheses or X is an element of C. Then this X is an element of C, this or and X is an element of C, we can just uh, put outside with a union and say X is an element of U such that X is an element of A or X is an element of B. Union X is an element of U. So, so that X element of C. And we can also sort of um, put this or outside with union and say this is this part the X element of U so that X element of A or X element of B can be written as A union B. And we had also union C outside so it is in parentheses A union B and then outside parentheses union C. What is it? It is right hand side. So we started from left hand side and we arrived to the right hand side. So they are equal. The alternative is open the left hand side and right hand side separately and see that they unite here. They are, uh, they are equal. They arrive at this most open form, which is X is an element of A or X is an element of B or X is an element of C. You can also make it as an exercise. You should go from a union parenthesis in parenthesis B union C from one side, from left hand side, open it up to here, and then take A union B in parenthesis union C, the left and the right hand side, and open it going like this, and then arrive to the most general, most open form, which is X element of A or X element of B or X element of C. You see? So, um, all right. Both are okay. Both are uh, uh, valid strategies in uh, proving propositions, proving equalities. As an example, we can see the universal set is again Arabic numerals from 0 to 9. We have A, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. B, which is 0, 3, 5, 7, 9, and C, 0, 1, 9. All right. So let's form the left-hand side and right-hand side separately and see that they give the same result. This is an example, not a proof. The proof is done with a description. But examples are done with, with spatial sets. And we can also draw the Venn diagrams, all these are ways to see the same phenomenon, the same rule, 
in with different objects with different sort of uh, symbols so uh, a union b union c b union c in parentheses in left hand side what shall we do we should first unite b and c and then add a to this one what is a zero one two three four i wrote it down i write it down here union b union c i have to write down b union c what is b union c zero one three five seven nine zero is uh, common nine is common i don't count them twice i count them once so zero one comes from here three five seven and nine comes from both so i take it so zero one three five seven nine is b union c and i should unite it with uh, this with a which is zero one two three four so what do I obtain without counting twice the common ones? Zero, one, two, three, five, four, five, seven, nine. Six and eight are not uh, are absent here. And all right, this is correct. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, seven, nine. And if I unite a union, if I form a union B first, and then unite this to C, as in the right hand side. What is it? First, I form A union B, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 9. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 9. All right. A union B is this one. Union C. What is C? 0, 1, 9. Union 0, 1, 9. Okay. I formed it. And I see 0, common, but what I counted once. 1 and 9. All, all, are, all are common. So I don't count 0, 1, 9 again. What I obtain is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 9. 9 is, has come past here for <laughs> my mistake, but it's okay. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 9, which is equal. You see, it is equal. Those two sets, two resulting sets are equal. We can observe it. This is an example. And when you write down something and when you show the equality of something, at the end, show really their equality. To put them equal or put a small sign, a small arrow or something showing their equality. Or write down that they are equal. Um, all right. So, um, again, uh, associative law, this time with intersection. We, uh, we study the associative law, the associativity of the intersection, of the operation intersection. We studied the uh, union, now it is associativity with intersection. Uh, an example or a proposition is uh, A intersection, B intersection, C, but first we intersect B and C and then intersect this to A. This should be equal to, according to this proposition, this should be equal to A intersection B in parentheses, intersection C. So it should not make a difference if we intersect first B and C and then intersect with A, or we intersect first A and B, then intersect this with C. It should not make any difference. This is the proposition we have to see and prove. Well, let's first see the Venn diagram and then prove it and then see the example. On the Venn diagrams, here are the universal sets, the quadratic frames, and the three intersection set, intersecting sets, A, B, C, like the um, Mickey Mouse uh, head type thing figure. Anyway, all right, so what does it say? The left-hand side says uh, intersect B and C first. B is here, C is here, what are, what are the common elements? It is this, uh, well, the green shaded, light green shaded area, elliptic area between the two B and C, this one. The intersection of B and C. And what is the intersection of A with this green shaded area? It is this, there is a kind of triangular uh, small area which is uh, dark colored. This is this small triangle uh, between A, B, and C, which is the intersection of both three. So it doesn't. Uh, it says 
if we first intersect B and C, then intersect A, we obtain this part. All right. And what does it say the right-hand side? We intersect first A and B. So it is the common area between the two, A and B. It is, again, this green shaded area, elliptic green shaded area. And when, when I intersect this with C, I obtain this small, well, it is not exactly triangle, but almost, or well, this half moon shaped area between all these three sets. And this is equal to this one, of course. This small area between the, all these three sets, it is this one. And, of course, left-hand side is equal to right-hand side. It doesn't uh, make any difference in which order we intersect them at the end. The result is the same. So, if we want to prove it formally, then we should do this way. A intersection, parenthesis, in parenthesis, B intersection, C. What is it? A is X, X is an element of universe set such that X is an element of A. Intersection, parenthesis, B and C. B intersection, C. What does it mean? X is an element of U such that X is an element of B and X is an element of C. Intersection means this, and. And it goes with, and goes with uh, intersection, and it goes with multiplication in arithmetics. So, um, all right. Then I can also add this X uh, element of A to the parenthesis, in the, into the parenthesis, and say X is element of universal set such that X is element of A and in parentheses, x and element of b and x and element of c. But can I not open the parentheses now? Of course I can. It doesn't mean anything because uh, the uh, and means all the conditions should be fulfilled together at the same time. So x is an element of a and x is an element of b and x is an element of c. x is an element of universal set such that x is an element of a and x is an element of b and x is an element of c. This is the most open form. Then I can collect again to, for, to go from there to the right-hand side. Or I can open the right-hand side and arrive to this most open form as well. It's up to you or uh, up to the question, the, the exam, for instance. So at, in the book, it makes like this. If I want to arrive to A intersection B, then I should regroup in the parentheses A and B. So I should write down in the parentheses, in the in the uh, general set, x is an element of u, so that in parentheses, x is an element of a and x is an element of b, and outside parentheses, and x is an element of c. It's okay. Then, I just put this x is an element of c outside. How? With an intersection sign. I took the parentheses and make a subset and uh, C as another subset. So X is an element of U such that X is an element of A and X is an element of B. Intersection, X is an element of U such that X is an element of C. And but what is this thing at the, at the left? X is an element of A and X is an element of B. It is X inter A intersection B. So in parentheses A intersection B and outside parentheses intersection C. What is it? right-hand side of the equation. We started from left-hand side and we arrived to the right-hand side. Alternatively, we can start from both sides and open it, open it, open it, and arrive up to the most open form, which is x element of A and x element of B and x element of C. You can also make it as an exercise, start from here, go back and arrive there and start from left-hand side and open it and arrive to the most uh, open form and show that they are equal. You see? So, um, an example, numerical example. U is 0, 1, 3, uh, 2, 3, uh, up to 9 Arabic numerals. A is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. B is 0, 3, 5, 7, 9. C is 0, 1, 9. Uh, so, left-hand side is B intersection C and then A intersection the others, B intersection C. So, A is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, intersection, B intersection C. What is B intersection C? Common elements of B and C, 0 and 9. There are no common elements, 0, 9. 
This is B intersection C. And A is this one, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. What are the common elements? Just 0. So this is A intersection, parenthesis, B intersection C. And what is A intersection B in parenthesis and then outside parenthesis intersection C? A intersection B is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 3, 5, 7, 9. There, are, uh, there is just 0 and 3, which are common. So A intersection B is 0, 3. Intersection C, which is uh, C, 0, 1, 9. And what are, what are their intersection? It is 0. So those are equal. The, uh, this is not a proof, but this is an example. Uh, with these given sets, we form the left-hand side and right-hand side. And we see and we show that they are equal. You see? And in description, in numeric example, and in Venn diagrams, we can show the same thing. Of course, the description is the proof, the formal proof. The other ones are examples or demonstrations. Then we have the distributive law or distributivity. Uh, what is it? A intersection, B union C. Uh, well, you might, might know the distributivity of uh, multiplication over addition. We have the same thing here as well, but we have more than this. We have the distributivity of the intersection over union, and we have also the distributivity of the union over intersection, which is peculiar to the sets. We don't find it with no numbers with, uh, in arithmetics, you see. So, um, let's see. Uh, A intersection B union C. Uh, is it equal to? Uh, we just distribute the intersection in the parenthesis. A intersection B union A intersection C. This is the law. A intersection B union C means A intersection B union A intersection C. Uh, in Venn diagrams, you see, uh, we can see it as uh, B union C first in parentheses. So I just uh, shade the B and C together and intersect it with A, which take I shade the common area with this one, this A, which is this foot like or um, well, um, well, it is like a foot or whatever, this area. All right. Then if I take the right hand side, I in A intersection B, union A intersection C. What is A intersection B? Is this common area between B and C, this small part, small elliptic uh, area. A intersection C is the, uh, the elliptic area between A and C. This is this part. And their union is, again, this foot like figure, this area, this shaded area. So those are equal, you see? They are equal. Um, so, um, let's prove it and see a, a, an example as well. Uh, again, in the book, it makes, uh, it starts from the left-hand side and arrives at the, to the right-hand side. It's okay. Or we can open both, I mean, parallelly and uh, obtain the same most open expression. You can also try it. It's, it's uh, even easier. So, um, the left-hand side, A intersection, uh, B in union C in parentheses. What does it mean? X is an element of U such that X is an element of A. This is A intersection. B union C, what is B union C? X is an element of U such that X is an element of B or X is an element of C. And when I put this X element of A into the parentheses, I change the intersection to end. So I obtain X is an element of U such that X is an element of A and in parentheses X is an element of B or X is an element of C. But what does it mean? If there is an and here, X should be an element of A. And beside, it should be an element of X is an element of B or X is an element of C. So what does it mean? It means X is, X is an element of U such that X is an element of A, it is obligatory, which is and, and X is an element of B, or X is an element of A, and X is an element of C. If it is an element of A and B, it's okay. If it's an element of B and C, it's okay again. And 
if it's a lot of A and B and A and C, it's okay. Okay, again, so there is an OR in between. So what we obtain is X element of U such that X element of A and X element of B in parentheses, or in parentheses again, X element of A and X element of C. But can I not open this OR in between as union outside? Yes, of course, I can put this outside to this OR as union. So I can write down X element of U such that X element of A and X element of B union X element of U such that X element of E and X element of C. But what are these parentheses? The first one is A intersection B. The second one is A intersection C. So I obtain A intersection B union A intersection C. So I obtain the right hand side. I start from left hand side and I obtain the right hand side. So they are equal. Alternatively, you can just go from the right hand side backwards and uh, arrive up to here the most open expression here you can unite the, you, you can open both left hand side and the right hand side uh, parallelly and obtain the most common expression most open expression which is here see all right and the numeric example u is again the arabic numerals a is 01234 b is 03579 c is 019 what is a intersection par in parentheses b intersection b union c so i will unite b and c 013579 and i will intersect it with a 01234 intersect uh, i take the common elements 0 1 and 3 this is the a un intersection in parentheses b union c b union c in parentheses and what is right hand side? A intersection B, union A intersection C. Both A intersection B and A intersection C in parentheses. What is A intersection B? 0, 3. Common elements. What is A intersection C? 0, 1. Common elements. 9 is not common. So what I will what shall I do? I will unite them. 0, 3, union 0, 1, 0, 1, 3. I see the first one. Yes, they are equal. So left hand side and right hand side are equal also in the example. So I draw the Venn diagrams. I I have drawn the Venn diagrams. I have proved it with uh, logical operators, with logical description. And I saw an example, a numeric example. It's OK. Uh, then distributed law, which is not found in arithmetics, but which is found in the set theory, it is A union in parentheses B intersection C is equal to A union B intersection A union C. Uh, the equivalent of this would be in arithmetics, distributivity of addition over, in, uh, over uh, multiplication, which doesn't exist. In arithmetics, you have only the distributivity of multiplication over addition, you see? But here it's also uh, the union it can be distributed over intersection, which is a peculiarity or it is generality of the set theory. So um, A union B intersection C. Oh, uh, let's see first the Venn diagrams and then the proof and the example. In Venn diagrams, what does it say? B intersection C first, the parentheses left hand side. At the left hand side, we have B intersection C. What is it? The common elements of B and C, this green, green shaded area between B and C, this part. And then we will unite this with A. So we will shade all the A and this small area. So we obtain this form, which um, which reminds us perhaps, um, well, the table tennis racket or something. See this green shaded area, the whole of the, is, uh, the left hand side. The right hand side is A union B. I should first make the A union B, A and B together. It is this shaded form. The colors are different, but they are shaded, you see. They are sort of, sort of shaded, sort, sort of uh, shadowed. And then we have A union C. A union C is this uh, green shaded, green colored area. It's not shaded, it's colored, green colored area. 
and when I take their intersection, the intersection of A union C and A union B are their common elements. This A is all common, and this part is common as well. So we obtain the same shape, which reminds us a table tennis racket. You see? It is also made uh, sort of uh, depicted or delineated with these uh, broken lines. All right. Oh, mm, let's not change, change it. So when we prove it, uh, we should form, um, well, here again, the strategy is to form A union B intersection C in parentheses and then open it and uh, arrive to the uh, left hand side, which is A union B intersection A union C. So let's see. A union B intersection C, what is it? A is outside, so X is an element of U such that X is an element of A. Union B intersection C is their common element, so it's uh, X, X is an element of B and X is an element of C. So we obtain X element of U such that X is an element of B and X is an element of C. And when we put this uh, X element of A into the parentheses, union is transformed to OR. So what I obtain is X is an element of U such that X is an element of A or in parentheses X is an element of B and X is an element of C. And when I, uh, can I distribute this OR in two in these? Yes, I can. Why? Because OR means X is an element of A is accepted. X is an element of B and X is an element of C. One of these common elements is accepted or both are accepted. So I can well say X is an element X is an element of U such that X is an element of A and A, or X is an element of B in parentheses and X is an element of A or X is an element of C. This would be the same thing. Then I will uh, again form the sets. I will decompose it in two parts. I will say uh, X is an element of U such that X is an element of A and or X is an element of B. This end at the middle, I will just make it intersection uh, to uh, outside the parentheses. So, and uh, there we obtain uh, X element of U such that X element of A or X element of C. But what are these two parts at the two sides of the intersection? Those are unions or can be open as union. So A union B, A union C, and they are joined with intersection. Did I obtain, have I obtained the right-hand side? Yes, I started from the left-hand side. I arrived, I obtained the right-hand side, so they are equal, you see. Or another um, way is, as I said, to open each one parallelly and obtain at the end the same, um, the same expression, the same open expression, which is here in between. You see, this is possible as well. All right, and we should also see a numeric example. What is it? Let's see. Uh, in the numeric example, we have A is, well, we have again the universal set is the, the Arabic numerics from 0 to 9. Uh, we obtain A, which is 0, 1, 3, 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4. B is 0, 3, 5, 7, 9, and C is 0, 1, 9. What is A union B intersection C in parentheses? A union this, what is it? A is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. B intersection C are the common elements of B and C, which is 0 and 9. All right. This union 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 9. All right. Without counting 0, double, of course. What is right hand side? A union B intersection A union C. What is A union B? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. 0 and 3 are already, uh, already there. 5, 7, 9. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 9. And what is A union C? It is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 9. All right. And when we intersect them, which is to take the common elements, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 9. And we look, yes, they are equal. Left-hand side and right-hand side are equal. 
and the, it works as well. The rule works in the example. Well, it should work. Uh, I mean, uh, if it wouldn't work, it would it would haven't worked. It would have surprised us a lot because we have already proved it. No? Proof is uh, stronger than an example. And then we arrive to the De Morgan laws. De Morgan is a Scottish one. Uh, I mean, uh, the name is a little bit French, De Morgan, De Morgan, but uh, he's, he was Scottish, mathematician. And uh, these laws are important. I don't know whether they are in at the book or not, but I I think they are not very explicit. So I, I explain them uh, thoroughly here so that you can understand, you can use them. It, they are important. This, these are laws about complements. What does it say? It says A intersection B complement, which is complement of A intersection B, is complement of A union complement of B. When I open this, the intersection turns to union. A inter intersection B complement is equal to A, in A complement union B complement. Let's first see it at the Venn diagram and then uh, prove it and see a uh, um, numeric example. Let's see. So, on the Venn diagrams, it is not so difficult. Let's see it. Uh, what does it say? Uh, we have again the universal set, left hand side and right, right hand side. We just depict them separately and see them, they are equal. What does it say? It says first, A intersection B. We make first what is in parentheses. A intersection B is this small, uh, well, yellowish area between A and B. A intersection B is this. What is its complement? Everything outside this area. So green shaded. All the universal set besides, except this yellow shaded area or white shaded area, whatever. More yellow shades or white, let's call it. Anyway, this green shaded area is A intersection B, complement, complement of A intersection B. A intersection B is this empty part, and the other, all the other parts, all the other green shaded area is A intersection B, complement. All the elements of U which are not elements of A intersection B. But if I form A not A complement, what is it? Is a outside everything outside A. I should well. This is a little bit um, unfortunate because it's not easy to to see it like this. Let's say I make just um, I make uh, well uh, these uh, lines from. Uh, upper, uh, well, from uh, from up uh, right to down, left, left down, uh, up uh, right, up to left down, like this. These uh, lines would be a nut, a complement of a, which is outside a. Then I should make the b complement, which is all these lines from. Um, from upper left to the lower right, the other way around. This should be B complement outside B. But when I take the, their union, all this area is shaded. The only area which is not shaded would be this small area between A and B, which is intersection of A and B. As I said, it's unfortunate because these uh, figures don't show very much. It's uh, difficult to show A complement, union B complement. Because when you take the union, you take the whole area anyway. So the, these, uh, these textures uh, mix up. We don't see them very much. But you can make it for yourself at home uh, with your pencil and see that first make A a complement. We just color the area outside A. Then you color the area outside B and then make their union and then you will see that all the area will be shaded besides this small area between A and B which is equal. So outside this green shaded area and this 
uh, well, this textured area are equal. Everything besides these small ellipses. So they are equal, you see. Uh, with, uh, for proving them with description, we form here uh, the left hand side and right hand side and then show that they are equal uh, a intersection b complement complement of a intersection b what is a intersection b it is x element of u such that x is element of a and x is element of b this is a intersection b its complement is the complement of this set all right but what is it x is element of a and x is element of b means if x is not an element of a it is not an element of a and b if if x is not an element of b it is not an element of a and b and if x is not an element of a or b together it's not an element of a and b so what do i obtain Ob i obtain this x is element of u such that x is not element of a or x is not an element of b if x is not an element of a it can't be an element of a and b so it is an element of its complement of its not if x is not an element of b it can't be an element of a and b again and if or includes both cases so if x is no not element of a neither of b it's okay as well so it's not an element of a and b so uh, or is the correct operator here if we open the right hand side a complement means means x is element of u such that x is not an element of a b complement means by definition x is element of u and x uh, or such that x is not an element of b there is union between them what is union or i can join this union together in the parentheses as or one is uh, acceptable, the other one is acceptable, both are acceptable. So what is it? X is element of U such that X is not an element of A or X is not an element of B. Are they equal? They are equal. So we have proven. You see, left hand side and right hand side are equally descriptive. So they are equal. We have proven the law. It is the Morgan law, one of the De Morgan laws. In a, an example, we can see the U is Arabic numerals from 0 to 9. A is 0, 1, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. B is 0, 3, 5, 7, 9. A intersection B complement. We form first A intersection B, which are common elements. 0, 3. No, there are no other common elements. And we should form the complement of that, which is all the elements of universal set minus 0 and 3. We should just, we should just uh, sort of not write down the 0 and 3. What is it? 0, 1, 2, 4, 5. Um, no, 0 is not. 0 is common. 3 is common. We will not take 0 and 3. We will take 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, uh, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. All right. And what is right hand side? A complement, union B complement. Let's form A complement, which is not A. Zero, we don't take 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. We take the others. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. All right. What is B complement? This is B not. So we don't take 0, 2, 5, 7, 9. We take 1, 2, uh, 4, 6, 8, 9. 1, 2, 4, 6. 5 as well. 5 is not common. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, mm, no. 1, 2, 4, 6, 8. So B complement. B, B not. We don't take 0, 3, 5, 7, 9. We take uh, 1, 2, four six eight yes four six eight this is b complement a complement union b complement we take all together what is it <clears throat> we have one two four five six seven eight nine one two four five six seven eight nine we just see the other one the left hand side it is one two four five six seven eight nine they are equal so in in the example it works as well law works great and uh, the last uh, slide another de morgan law a union b complement is a complement intersection b complement union of a and b 
and we, if we take its complement, it is A complement uh, intersection B complement. Let's see on the Venn, Venn diagrams and then see the proof and the example. A union B, left hand side, first form in the parentheses, A union B, what is it? A is this one, B is this one, A union B is all the, uh, all the yellow area. Yellow colored area is A union B. Outside this yellow colored area, but inside universal set, is this uh, textured area outside the yellow one. What is not yellow, but outside. A union B complement. What is then A complement intersection B complement? Here it is more visible. A complement is, A is this one, this blue one. And it is, uh, if you can note it, uh, it has lines from upper left to lower uh, right. So these would correspond to the upper left to lower right uh, lines. And B is lower left to upper right. So B not, B, B complement would be upper left to lower, lower right or, or everything outside B. And everything outside A is upper right to lower left, these, but everything outside A. So A complement is everything outside A. B complement is everything outside B, but inside the universal set. So these lines, this te texture outside this blue area is A complement intersection B complement. A complement and is the common area of A complement and B complement. This is this area outside A and B, A or B, or so this uh, blue shaded area. So we see both textured areas outside the two eggs, two potatoes or egg shaped forms, which are the sets. It corresponds, it's the same area. So A union B complement is equal to A complement intersection B complement. Let's now prove it um, sort of um, officially or uh, formally with description. What is A union B? It is X in U such that X element of U such that X element of A or X element of B. This is A union B. We will take, uh, we will take the complement of this one. What is X? A, X in A and X in B. X is an element of A and X is an element of B. X, X can, can be an element of A. X can be an element of B or it can be an element of both. Or means this, inclusive or. So what is its complement? It should be neither element of A nor element of B. If it is one of these, or is fulfilled. But complement means it should not be fulfilled. So X can't be an element of A, nor can be an element of B. So the complement of X element of A or X element of B is X element of U. It should be this one, A, not E, universal set. A is every circle in Turkish. It remains from there, but it is U. So that X is not element of A and X is not element of B. This is the most open form of A union B complement. And what is the right hand side? A complement intersection B complement. What is A complement? X is an element of U such that X is not an element of A. What is B complement? X is an element of U such that or N. X is not an element of B. And what is their intersection? They should be fulfilled all together. So X is an element of U so such that X is not an element of A and X is not an element of B. Are they equal? Yes, left hand side and right hand side are equal. We obtain the same expression, the same open expression. So they are equal. You see, we have proven the rule, the law. And with the numerical example, again, U is the Arabic numerals from 0 to 9. A is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. B is 0, 3, 5, 7, 9. A union B is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 9. What is its complement? We, from U, 0 to 9, we should just erase 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 9. What does it remain? It remains 6 and 8. So this is the subset 6, 8. 
And what is A complement intersection B complement? Let's form A complement and B complement. A is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. A complement is everything, but not 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, we don't take it. We take 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This is A complement. What is B complement? Uh, everything, which is not 0, 3, 5, 7, 9, which is in U. We don't take 0, 3, 5, 7, 9. What does it remain? It remains 1, 2, 4, 6, 8. And we take the intersection of these two, which is uh, 1, there, it's not common, 2 is not common, 4 is not common, 6 and 8 are common. So 6, 8, this subset is A complement intersection B complement. Is it equal to the first one, A union B complement? Yes, 6, 8, 6, 8. They are equal. So uh, the rule is also shown on the example. But don't forget. An example is not a proof. Thousand examples don't, don't make a proof. But a counterexample destroys a law, destroys a proof. One counterexample is sufficient to destroy a proposition, a law. But thousand examples don't make a proof. You should, you should, you should prove it anyway. And at the end of, of each section, we have some exercises. You just try them. You have also, I will sh send you the exercise, the solution book, the book and the solution book. And you can also try yourself without looking at the solutions and then uh, try yourself and then look at the solutions. And we can also, uh, perhaps if we have some sessions together, we can also solve them together. Otherwise, you will uh, have also the solutions as the solution book. So thank you very much for today. You can read the presentations, you can watch the records, and you can always reach me through my uh, cell phone, my um, well, WhatsApp or Telegram, or my email, and ask me questions. Thank you very much for today. I am, uh, I am stopping the, uh, the recording. So thank you very much, and um, all right. And see you next week. But you can reach me any any time you wish. Mm -hmm.